Welcome back everyone, I apologize for the extreme delay and uh, the videos I'm usually posting on YouTube, I've uh, been extremely busy. So today we have a 1958 uh, chainsaw, it's a McClue I believe is how you pronounce the name. Uh, I've liked these, I've used them in the past, I like the coloration and they're pretty easy to work on for the most part. So we're just going to get right on in. Alright, so right now I'm going to show you what everything is. This is the high speed mixture control. It controls a uh, fuel mixture. That's the primer button to pump the fuel into the, uh, the carburetor. It, you know, helps out in cold start. That would be the chain oiler, which back then it, you did, used to have to pump the oil on it. That would be the throttle. And then this is obviously the pull start. I guess technically the starter handle, but it's the pull start chain. So that over here you have the uh, idle speed control so when it's just normal idling you just barely want it to pull the chain that's the gasoline cap where the gasoline tanks at and then this is the oil tank generally speaking these would usually be on the same frame part for uh, newer chainsaws but the older ones they would have an actual separate tank on the front of the uh, chainsaw Now the gentleman that I got this from stated that he tinkered with it and a lot of things were broken on it, which I kind of could already tell from the pull start, it was broken. So I had to get you know, right on into it. So right here we have the first bit of the takedown of the whole entire frame to separate the housing unit from the actual frame. And I'm taking apart the throttle cable to go ahead and remove it from the uh, frame. So now I'm taking all the uh, bolts out. You gotta take the arm guards off. You gotta take the bolts out of the handle, the front handle off, and you gotta take a bunch of bolts out. It's actually not that many. It's only three bolts to take the housing unit off, but I'm taking this hand guard off because it's connected to the upper housing unit, which is what I'm trying to separate from the frame. Just like that it comes apart. You can see the uh, clutch and the fan shroud, the whole nine yards. You have the uh, ignition coil right there. You got the fan blades. Everything seems to be working okay. Uh, the guy said he took a lot of things apart to tinker with it, but that usually scares me when I hear people say that. So I went ahead and uh, took the spark plug out because he had that it wasn't getting any uh, spark. So I went ahead and took out the uh, spark plugs. I always replace the spark plugs just so I can get a fresh start. Uh, this one had, uh, you know, normal wear and tear on it. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. And it, you know, it didn't alarm me there. So I just replaced it with a auto light spark plug. They burn usually a little bit hotter and they're burning easier for the gasoline, especially for two cycles. So I like using them. So I went ahead and inspected the cylinder. I didn't see that the spark plug burnt through the piston. There was no scorching in the piston. There was no scorching in the cylinder. There was nothing. So then I went ahead and went on to cleaning the parts. Then I used acetone. Normally for my videos you've seen in the past, I use uh, white vinegar. Uh, I couldn't tell if these bolts in the frame were aluminum magnesium or if they were actually steel because there was hardly any rust on them. So it kind of alarmed me. So I just went ahead and used acetone to get rid of the oil, the grease, 
the build up over you know almost you know, I'd say 70 years of the chainsaw being alive and it works pretty good it's just you know hot water and acetone that's really all I use and I let it sit for about you know uh, usually 12 hours and uh, yeah Upon further investigation, I started realizing there was a serious problem with the hand crank. Uh, it wasn't retracting all the way. The spring was acting kind of funny. And the clutch, which is what I'm showing you there, kind of was acting a little bit uh, stiff, which is not a good sign. So I went ahead and cleaned everything out, thinking that may have been the problem. You know, you start simple and build your way up. And uh, unfortunately, I started realizing pretty quickly that that wasn't the case. Upon further investigation, I went ahead and kind of shrunk the pull rope, you know, even closer to the frame. Uh, it was still acting kind of stiff. It seemed like it kind of worked better, but not really. But the clutch is still kind of stiff. And I started just going ahead and working on everything on the upper frame of the uh, chainsaw. Usually with older machines, the exhaust has a leak in it, which causes severely low compression. Unfortunately, this was not the case. It wasn't a simple fix like that, so I had to investigate it a little bit more. Um, I didn't find anything wrong with the magnetos, with the coil, with the ignition coil, with the spark plug wire, even really with the spark plug. So I went ahead and went over to the fuel mixture thinking that could have been the problem. So then I went over to the breaker box, and no, it's not like a house breaker. Most breaker boxes consist of an adjustment screw points, which are two contact points where you'll see a little, you know, an arc of a spark, kind of like a spark plug, but it's a little bit different. It sends it to the ignition coil, then to the spark plug, and it needs to be ten thousandths of an inch. So I went ahead and started looking at it, and I could see right off the bat that everything was pretty much, hasn't been touched in a while, but it was still in fairly excellent condition. And here you can see the adjustment screw on top and the contact points, which are technically that bar in the middle right there. And when the engine goes to a specific spot of the uh, movement when it's in a circular motion, it will open up those contact points to get a, a spark. So as you can see here, the flashlight is on what causes the... Uh, that type of contact point to go off. Uh, usually if it's really rusty, corroded, it's not getting good enough, uh, you know, contact, it won't give a spark anywhere. But unfortunately here, it's in excellent condition, which is good, but at the same time, it, that's not the problem. So I have to keep looking. Uh, I'm thinking at this point that it just needs to have a, you know, good deep clean and everything should work right. So I went ahead and took it away from the bench to actually give it a nice deep, you know, chemical clean bath, which is just, you know, um, really a throttle body cleaner and some type of brake cleaner that I use on the metal only. And while I'm cleaning it, I went ahead and got rid of all the loose, you know, oil, motor oil, grease, and, you know, matted up um, sawdust and went ahead and actually found the loose washer that I was supposed to find earlier. So I went ahead and just cleaned everything up on front. So I used my calibers. I got a specific uh, piece of paper that was close to ten thousandths of an inch. I think it was actually eleven thousandths. And I went ahead and stuck in between the points on the contact 
just to make sure that it was able to um, go ahead and uh, fit between them, and it did. So I went ahead and put the uh, cover back on. Right is the original spark plug. Came with a chainsaw, and I'm replacing it with the auto light on the left. They burn a little bit hotter, uh, cleaner, and they last a little bit longer. You can see that this one actually has a little bit longer of a threading. Uh, that shouldn't really affect the engine all too much. And I went ahead and engaged it just to make sure it was exactly correct, which is supposed to be 25 thousandths of an inch for the spark plug gap. And if it's in there and nothing um, is loose, I turn the engine. Uh, just to make sure that, you know, the piston's working, there's no rattling, and to make sure that uh, it has a smooth process going up and down like it's supposed to. that the throttle linkage hooks up to this piece of the carburetor which lets more fuel to air ratio into the carburetor for more power and more uh, RPMs in the engine and the chainsaw. So now you can see that the acetone in the water has kind of evaporated. I've let it sit for about a day uh, which is a little bit longer than normal but you can see that there's a lot of debris and dust that have you know, it's gotten loosened off the uh, actual pieces of metal, the bolt, and the uh, threads, so it's ready to come out. So now, I was going to go ahead and just start threading it in there, and then I thought that I needed to check to make sure the actual magneto was getting the um, bolts and the correct, uh, I guess, uh, spark to the spark plug. So I went ahead and put the night vision on the here. It's burning really bright and very hot, which is perfect. After checking all the levers and buttons and making sure everything fit in correctly, I went ahead and uh, did a little bit of a trick. I put starting fluid inside the actual tank, just a little bit of a squirt. Uh, it gives it a little bit more ethanol, a little bit more cleaner, and it makes it easier to start in cold weather especially. However, this mix is actually a little bit too rich in gasoline for this uh, engine. It's really needing to have a 40 to 1 or a 32 to 1 mix ratio. Uh, I just put the more fuel ratio into it just so I can get a little bit better to start. 
Uh, this will cause the engine to heat up over time and can cause damage. If I run it a lot, I'm just running it a little bit and it's in cold weather, so it should be relatively okay. And with all my chainsaws and chainsaw accessories, I only use Husqvarna's oil. Uh, I absolutely love that brand and the chainsaws, and to this day, I'm still going to be a Husqvarna's guy. And last but not least, here we go with trying to start it. chainsaw started realizing the pull start was getting more and more loose and was starting to break and as soon as I tried you see me here trying to get to reset and it wouldn't and I realized pretty quickly that the spring coil had fell off its track which obviously if anybody's ever had to replace or done one of those those they understand that that is a, uh, a nightmare and a half which technically it was Top things off, the rope actually came out of the whole entire thing as well. So that was even more of a bummer. So I went ahead and just kind of accepted the, the defeat, and I won't, you know, make you guys watch me take the whole frame apart. We'll just get to the actual uh, part of me taking the upper manifold apart of the housing unit. And as you can see there, it's already really, really loose. It's sticking out a lot further than it should. They usually have a little bit of play in them, but not that severe. And I could tell immediately where the uh, rope was supposed to be and where it had gotten ripped out. what I do with my hands right about here when it comes to the coil spring. You can see that I deflect it away from me and lean away. These can actually be extremely dangerous under extreme tensions. Fortunately this one had most of the tension let out of it so it wasn't that big of a safety hazard but I've had them actually stick me before. And they're not fun when they do that. Now as you can see there's two uh, pulleys on this that are divided by a slot in the middle. Right where my finger's at now I'm pointing to the pull side and there's a hole where the actual um, string is supposed to go and on this side there's a groove where the spring is supposed to go. Um, the spring will always have more I guess metal spring than you'll have pull rope and that's so you can have constant tension on the rope because the rope acts as a stop before it completely uh, detensifies or desprings the actual coil spring. Unfortunately, I've had to do this a lot with a bunch of old machines that I uh, receive or get from bands or farmers that I buy equipment from. So one of the things I've learned is you put a finishing hole at the end of the rope and you hammer it in. You don't want to match the rope, you just want it to go right through the rope. And this acts as a uh, 
a stopper and a uh, tensioner for the rope at the very end. So I just go ahead and curl it into a U shape at the very end of the pull rope. And then I go ahead and I fuse this pull rope and I make sure that it's melted completely around the uh, actual nail itself. I make sure that it gets melted into the string. It makes a really big ball of basically melted rope. Let it burn for a little bit and then you blow it out. Then you smash it with uh, my needle nose and you can see how it's smoking but it's also this big knot of melted in a, in a nail. Make sure it fits in there, then I go ahead and I cut the nail off even with the, uh, the rope. And now we have a stopper that should last for quite a while. And you can even see how hard I pull on it and it doesn't want to come out. Which technically you never want that much tension on the end of the rope anyway. Because uh, that means that, you know, you're not pulling it right or something wrong with the machine. To save you guys the uh, heartache of watching me coil that back, basically what I'm doing is I hook it in the groove and then I just slowly tense it back and I just keep rotating it until it's pretty much all the way inside there. And then there's a little groove on the frame that actually where that big hook goes on where it keeps the tension of the coil spring in place. And you'll see me put that on the saw right about now. As you can see, I still hold the spring and the pull rope in place with one hand while I am going ahead and putting the bolts in to retain that housing unit all together inside the, uh, the clutch and coil spring and everything. Once the uh, bolts are in place, I can safely let it go and it can't go anywhere because the frame holds it in place. Make sure the trigger and the kill switch of the uh, engine are put in place and make sure the pull rope is going through the slot where it's supposed to go. Everything fits in perfectly. The fan shroud guard goes back in place, which is kind of like a nice puzzle piece. And once everything fits together, I go ahead and start bolting it down. See how the coil spring works by pulling back the uh, pull rope and everything. And everything seems to be working. The kill switch actually is pretty firm now. The oil pump works. Everything's back, put back in place. And I continue to put the top back onto the saw. First attempt to me pull starting it while it's sitting for uh, a day and a half in the cold weather of 40 degrees. <laughs> there 
there you have it. Kill switches off. Assault's fully restored. Thanks for watching.